Hello everybody and welcome to Eververse Games and today on the channel we're playing a game called Dear Esther. It's um, an indie game I believe. Uh, I've never heard of it before yesterday. I was on the PlayStation Store buying Little Misfortune and this was on the recommendation so uh, I thought we'd play um, just to you know see what it's all about you know. Video. Maybe the cross had just in case controller. Let's do. Is some turtles on? Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know what the game's about. So, yeah, I don't know how long it is. I so I'm not sure how many videos it'll be. So, let's. Um... Okay. Oh, progress is saved at the end of each chapter. So, uh, let's begin. Yeah. The lighthouse. This looks interesting, I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to turn it up just in case, because I don't think I can hear it very well. Dear Esther, I sometimes feel as if I've given birth to this island. Somewhere between the longitude and latitude, a split opened up, and it beached remotely here. No matter how hard I correlate, it remains a singularity, an alpha point in my life that refuses all hypothesis. I return each time leaving fresh markers that I hope, in the full glare of my hopelessness, will have blossomed into fresh insight in the interim. Okay, so here we are. It's a pretty beautiful game really. So this is the lighthouse. Um, cool. Oh, it's very um, dilapidated, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know the aim of the game, so we're just going to take it with each step, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, this better not be a horror game, I'll cry. I didn't do well in chemistry, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Looks like this place hasn't been lived in in quite a long time. Is there anything in here? Okay, so someone was in here though. Spilling paint? Which way do we go? Does it matter? It's a bit windy. Beach. So I look around. It's a very beautiful game, like very beautifully done, the graphics and everything. It kind of reminds me of What Remains of Edith Finch, which I have done on the channel before. told me a hush fell over the delivery room. A great red birthmark covered the left side of your face. No one knew what to say, so you cried to fill the vacuum. I always admired you for that, that you cried to fill whatever vacuum you found. I began to manufacture vacuums just to enable you to deploy your talent. The birthmark faded by the time you were six and had gone completely by the time we met, but your fascination with the empty and its cure remained. So are we Esther? Esther? Is it Esther or Esther? I don't know. It looks 
like someone drew something here in the scenario. Hmm. Interesting. Dear Esther, I found myself Esther, to be yeah. as featureless as this ocean, as shallow and unoccupied as this bay, a listless wreck without identification. My rocks are these bones and a careful fence to keep the precipice at bay. Shot through me caves, my forehead a mount. This aerial will transmit into me so. All overexposed, the nervous system, where Donnelly's boots and yours and mine still trample. I will carry a torch for you. I will leave it at the foot of my headstone. You will need it for the tunnels that carry me under. Wait, what? Okay, it looks like we need something to go in there. Anything back? there be anything up the other trail the one we didn't go through let's have a look let's go back up here Very windy, but I'm sure we'll be fine. I wonder if there's anything actually up here. Reading Donnelly by the weak afternoon sunlight, he landed on the south side of the island, followed the path to the bay, and climbed the mount. He did not find the caves, and he did not chart the north side. I think this is why his understanding of the island is flawed, incomplete. He stood on the mount and only wondered momentarily how to descend. But then, he didn't have my reasons. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm very confused. I have a feeling there must be something up here. When someone had died or was dying, or was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice, they cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boats, and know to send aid or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. Is that the bit they're on about? My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. This game is really mysterious, like it's really vague. I don't have a clue what's actually going on. They were God-fearing people, those shepherds. There was no love in the relationship. Donnelly tells me that they had one Bible that was passed around in strict rotation. It was stolen by a visiting monk in 1776, two years before the island was abandoned altogether. In the interim, I wonder, did they assign chapter and verse to the stones and grasses, marking the geography with a superimposed significance that they could actually walk the Bible and inhabit its contradictions? Hmm. 
Yeah, it's not very explained like what you have to do, which I kind of like. I like that the mis there's a mystery of the game. I think we got to uncover mystery like secrets. I'm gonna presume. Dear oh, Esther, a cave. I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. I threw my arms wide and the cliff opened out uh, before me, making that? this rough home. I transferred my belongings from the bothy on the mount and tried to live here instead. It was cold at night and the sea lapped at the entrance at high tide. To climb the peak, I must first venture even deeper into the veins of the island, where the signals are blocked altogether. Only then will I understand them, when I stand on the summit and they flow into me, uncorrupted. Well, I don't remember much from chemistry, but that's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. If that actually helps, I don't know. It's better not be a horror game. It wasn't when I read it, so... Mm. Okay. Please don't tell me this is where we came out of. But the way we came in. That's the way we started. I'm gonna presume we've gotta walk this way. It's windy. Hmm. I'm very intrigued. So I'm Esther. I'm going to presume it's my dad that's writing the letter. And he's kind of talking about the island. Which I'm going to presume he died in. The vegetation here has fossilized from the roots up. To think they once grazed animals here, the remnants of occupation being evidence to that. It is all sick to death. The water is too polluted for the fish, the sky is too thin for the birds, and the soil is cut with the bones of hermits and shepherds. I've heard it said that human ashes make great fertilizer, that we could sow yeah, a forest <laughs> from all that is left of your hips and ribcage with enough left over to thicken the air and repopulate the bay. No, it looks like no one lives here. Because the lighthouse hasn't been lived in a long time. Oh, there's some books. Yeah, chemistry. If only I could open it. <laughs> I've got an itchy eye. <laughs> I notice I can't run, which is a bummer. Oh, oh, it's a bit narrow. Ooh. Oh. Loading. We haven't finished a chapter, have we? Oh my god, we have! <laughs> I didn't think we'd have finished a chapter already. Jeez. Dear Jeez. Esther, <laughs> I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses, and have cross-referenced them within a millimetre using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. 
It's somewhere between the turn off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although okay, I can I always go? see it in my rear view mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. I'm a bit curious as to when this takes place. Because it's obvious it takes place in England or in the UK. Because I'm. I recognise the next places like Sanford and Wolverhampton. I've been Wolverhampton. <laughs> right, let's go this way. Is this part of the like place deserted? Because no one was in the lighthouse, and this looks deserted as well. <laughs> and there's loads of glass everywhere. This is dangerous. <laughs> find on the boat. We're going to go up there after I think so. Oh these are deserted look. Hmm. Curious. Did someone looks like a big crash or something? Ah, that's a boy. <laughs> hmm. There must be a hole in the bottom of the boat. How else could new hermits have arrived? Oh, what's there? says I can't make out what that says this is it and oh I can't really tell what it says to be honest hmm. can I come down no Bummer. get on the boat. Not that way. Go over here. Well, I think we got to go up here next. Maybe I can make it out from this side. Maybe. All night the boy has kept me lucid. I sat when I was at the very edge of despair, when I thought I would never unlock the secret of the island. I sat at the edge and I watched the idiot boy blink through the night. He's mute and he's retarded and he has no thought in his metal head but to blink each wave and each minute aside until the morning comes and renders him blind as well as deaf mute. In many ways, we have much in common. And neither did he did I eat nor drink. Hmm, okay. Don't appreciate the use of the R word, but uh, hey ho. I feel like we're gonna end up there. 
Maybe. Or it's going to be talked about. I uh, Signal tower. Hmm. Julius. Uh, turning around. We can get up there. The sun's really cool, like the way the light comes down. Okay, so this is where we came out. Can we get back up there or...? No, we can't. Hmm. I'm a bit unsure which way I'm supposed to go. Oh well. I'm sure I'll find it. Because <laughs> that's the way we went round. And we've been down there. But did I miss the turning down there? Well, that's probably... Bear trap? No, it's a wheel. <laughs> I thought it was a bear trap. I had kidney stones, and you visited me in the hospital. This way. After the operation, when I was still half submerged in anaesthetic, your outline and your speech both blurred. Now my stones have grown into an island and made their escape and you have been rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. Eh? Is Esther someone else? Is Esther her mum or something? Hmm. It's so weird. Like, I'm, I'm sure we'll learn as the story continues. But it's so vague, yet and that's what makes it interesting. Because, like, in What Remains of Edith Finch, you kind of had an idea what was going on because you were playing as Edith. So you knew you were uncovering your family, but this is very different. Okay, I'm going to presume that's where we're going to. I've begun my ascent on the windless slope of the western side. The setting sun was an inflamed eye squeezing shut against the light shone in by the doctors. My neck is aching through constantly craning my head up to track the light of the aerial. I must look downwards, follow the path under the island to a new beginning. It's a bit of a track, isn't it? The Bothy was constructed originally in the early 1700s. By then, shepherding had formalized into a career. The first habitual shepherd was a man called Jacobson from a lineage of migratory Scandinavians. He was not considered a man of breeding by the mainlanders. 
He came here every summer whilst building the Bothy, hoping eventually that becoming a man of property would secure him a wife and a lineage. Donnelly records that it did not work. He caught some disease from his malcontented goats and died two years after completing it. There was no one to carve white lines into the cliff for him either. No oh, sad. This is a self then. There's the thing again. If this game involves a monster, I'm out. <laughs> I didn't sign up for a horror. Oh, this house is also Three deserted. Three seen at dusk. They did not land. This house built of stone, built by a long dead shepherd. Contents. My camp bed, a stove, a table, chairs, my clothes, my books. The caves that score out the belly of this island, leaving it famished. My limbs and belly, famished. This skin, these organs, this failing eyesight. When the battery runs out in my torch, I will descend into the caves and follow only the phosphorescence home. Do I look over the mountain? Mountain, I mean, cliff, you know what I mean. I think that's where we just were. Oh, and that's where we walked across long earlier. Ah. So we must be going to the tower then. Because that thing's been bloody buzzing the whole time. <laughs> I'm just wanna have a look over the sh shed over here. So we'll look at the one over there. Just wanna have a look over there. And then we'll head up. Because I'm gonna presume that's where we gotta go, because that's where the path leads on. No, I'm gonna oh! That's sim the symbols again. Hmm. Very curious. Do we go this way? We may have to call him back up, I just realised by a wall. Very windy. In a footnote, the editor comments that at this point Donnelly was going insane as syphilis tore through his system like a drunk driver. He is not to be trusted. Many of his claims are unsubstantiated, and although he does paint a colourful picture, much of what he says may have been derived directly from his fever. But I've been here, and I know, as Donnelly did, that this place is always half imagined. Even the rocks and caves will shimmer and blur with the right eyes. They found Jacobson in early spring. The thaw had only just come. Even though he'd been dead nearly seven months, his body had been frozen right down to the nerves and had not even begun to decompose. All around him, small flowers were reaching for the weak sun. The goats had adjusted happily to life without a shepherd and were grazing freely about the valley. Donnelly reports they hurled the body in fear and disgust down the shaft. But I cannot corroborate this story. Oh, that's sad. Ah, we must be heading to like another cave. Climbing down to the caves, I slipped and fell and have injured my leg. I think the femur is broken. It is clearly infected. 
The skin has turned a bright, tight pink, and the pain is crashing in on waves, winter tides against my shoreline, drowning out the ache of my stones. I struggled back to the bothy to rest, but it has become clear that there is only one way this is likely to end. The medical supplies I looted from the trawler have suddenly found their purpose. They will keep me lucid for my final ascent. Um, are we sliding down there? Yep. Fuck. <laughs> I fell down a hole. <laughs> Is this how I'm gonna die? I fell down a hole? <laughs> okay, that's part two. Jakobson. So I think there's two more parts. I think we could finish this in one video, you know. Donnelly did not pass through the caves. From here on in, his guidance, die? unreliable as it is, is gone from me. I understand now that it is between the two of us, and whatever correspondence can be drawn from the wet rocks. I almost died, so fun times. Well, I can't go back up. So I must continue. Bloody hell, so if I fell down there, I could have died. That's a puddle. I think it's an alien. I've got there's gotta be an alien. Or something. Yeah. Well I haven't seen anything spooky yet, so Except for at the beginning when I shot myself <laughs> at a shadow. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there's something that way. Oh. There is no other direction. No other exit from this motorway. Speeding past this junction, I saw you waiting at the roadside. A one last drink in your trembled hands. That's just how I roll, I'm afraid. Go up there. I'm liking the ethereal music though. Ooh. Oh shit, am I gonna fall down another hop? Fine. God. I'll be careful. No slippy sliding for me. to jump down again? Or do I... Ah, go around. Honestly, I would not be surprised if I fell and died. Cave, though, isn't it? Ooh, 
Ooh, glowing mushrooms. <laughs> Luminescent toadstools. <laughs> Ooh, our light. <laughs> Let's go towards it. Whoa. I am travelling through my own body, following the line oh, of infection there's a few different from the shattered femur to towards the heart. I, I swallow fistfuls of painkillers to stay lucid. In my delirium, I see the twin lights of the moon and the aerial shining to me through the rocks. Which way do I go? I think it's that way. I'm just gonna have a look for it down here. Yeah, because the water's flowing that way, so that way must be the way out. Yeah, I was right. No, oh, I'll no harm in looking. It's a shame I can't run. <laughs> Christy. Can I make a crystal? This is a drowned man's face reflected in the moonlit water. I'm really glad I didn't fall from there. What the hell? I would have died. To drive you home. How do we get out? Didn't think that through, did I? Yeah, I really didn't think that through. Fuck! It would die if I stayed on here too long. Why do I think jumping it was a good idea? It's gonna wait on here and see what happened. Let's not go in there again. <laughs> I'm bloody soaking now, aren't I? I can't see my body. Maybe I'm a ghost. Behold Damascus. Oh shit! Oh, they've been down here and all. I'm not 
really liking this, it's a bit scary. A way for being dirty? <laughs> I don't know what that says. Let's swim. Swim, 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 swimming. Ding, 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 ding. Fell again. Am I dead? No, but I do need to. Wait, what? I'm on. I'm on the road. Do I just keep going on? Oh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That's always a good sign, ain't it? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Are we at part four now? Yeah. Oh, so that was Esther's part. But I'm still not sure if we're Esther because the letter. So we could be Esther or we could be someone completely different. Uh. That's not ominous or anything. So. Oh, yay, we're leaving the cave. <laughs> oh, it's night time now. How long were we in that cave for? <laughs> I'm gonna presume we've got to follow the candles. I wish I could have known Donnelly in this place. We would have had so much to debate. <laughs> did he paint these stones or did I? Who left the pots in the hut by the jetty? Who formed the museum under the sea? Who fell silently to his death into the frozen waters? Who erected this godforsaken aerial in the first place? Did this whole island rise to the surface of my stomach, forcing the gulls to take flight? That sounds like a you problem, dude. I'm just gonna be honest. There's someone up there. I returned home oh, with a pocket of stolen it is. ash. Half of it fell out of my coat and vanished into the car's upholstery. But the rest I carefully stowed away in a box I kept in a drawer by the side of my bed. It was never intended as a meaningful act, but over the years it became a kind of talisman. I'd sit still, 
quite still for hours, just holding the diminishing powder in my palm and noting its smoothness. In time, we will all be worn down into granules, washed into the sea and dispersed. Yeah, look, there's some up there. Ooh. <laughs> I wonder who it is. There we do, we're coming up. diagrams on the posters on the walls on the waiting room. It seemed appropriate at the time. Still life abstractions of the processes which had already begun to break down your nerves and your muscles in the next room. I crammed my dad as I once crammed for chemistry examinations. I am revising my options for a long and happy life. Is Esther dead? I have many questions. Okay, so we go out there. How the fuck do we get out? From here, I can see my armada. I collected all the letters I'd ever meant to send to you, if I'd have ever made it to the mainland, but had instead collected at the bottom of my rucksack, and I spread them out along the lost beach. Then I took each and every one, and I folded them into boats, I folded you into the creases, and then, as the sun was setting, I set the fleet to sail. Shattered into 21 pieces, I consigned you to the Atlantic, and I sat here until I'd watched all of you sink. Oh, that's poetic. What's in here? Oh. On a sudden light from heaven, thrown around him and he fell to the ground. Oh, that's a sim. That's something. <laughs> okay, I think we're nearly at the end now. There's the chalk lines that he was on about, I'm guessing, on the cliff face. Very interesting. I will drag my leg behind me. I will drag it like a crumpled hatchback, tires blown and sparking across the dimming lights of my vision. I'm running out of painkillers and am following the flicker of the moon home. When Paul keeled over dead on the road to Damascus, they restarted his heart with the jump leads from a crumpled hatchback. It took 21 attempts to convince it to wake up. That was the deep person. I knew there was a person.
Oh man, I gotta go the round. I want to just get up there and be like, who are you? <laughs> I've begun my voyage in a paper boat without a bottom. I will fly to the moon in it. I've been folded along a crease in time, a weakness in the sheet of life. Now you've settled on the opposite side of the paper to me. I can see your traces in the ink that soaks through the fiber, the pulped vegetation. When we become waterlogged and the cage disintegrates, we will intermingle. And he was proceeding. When this paper aeroplane leaves the cliff edge and carves parallel vapor trails in the dark, we will come together. <gasps> Wait, what? <gasps> what? Come back. What? What the? What? Ah! Uh, what? What? <gasps> oh, I'm gonna presume we can't do it again. Oh no, we can. We can do it again. Come back. Okay, I've actually run out of time for this, and we're nearly at the end. So the next video will be really, really short. But this is all I can do for the YouTube. So. Oh, I'm so confused. So we are going to have to go up there then, like I predicted. So we'll do that in the very short next video. But, oh, wow. <laughs> like, um, this game, like I said, this game isn't long. <laughs> I didn't think it would be because it's an indie game. Indie games don't tend to be too long. But, um, where's the dude gone? Because he was there. Oh, that's so cool. Right. Uh, stay tuned for the very next small part.